Thank you for tuning in to Fancier Feast. I'm your host, Miranda McGuire. Today, we have a really special treat. We're gonna be cooking up some lobster tail, some shrimp crab cakes, mashed potatoes, spinach, and of course, as always, a delicious signature drink. So, as we usually do, we're gonna start with our drink so we can enjoy it during the whole episode. So, we'll just go ahead and take a little shaker, and we're gonna start off with pouring in about a cup of Sprite. And this is a drink that I actually just created and named it Blueberry Remonage. So look for that on the recipe uh, on the website. And then we're gonna take and pour, and I'm just kinda eyeball it, and um, probably about two shot glasses, we'll say of rum, and I like cruising, but you can actually um, use any kind of rum that you want. And we're going to also take a little bit of Mio um, flavored berry pomegranate, and if y'all haven't tried this stuff, I highly recommend you get it. So just put a couple of drops in there, and then we're gonna tighten our lid back on and give it a good little shake, but not too much because of the carbonation with the Sprite. So instead of ice, um, you know, our rum is already chilled, so it's, uh, it's pretty cool, but I like to use berry for a couple of reasons. It gives an extra little flavor, it gives a great presentation, um, it's healthy, and your drink doesn't um, get watered down, like just using ice. So this uh, recipe that I just mixed up makes three glasses, so uh, you'll want to invite your friends over. Nobody likes to drink alone. And just pour a little bit in each glass. And it gives a beautiful purple color, um, complements of the blueberries and the Mio. And then we're just going to top it off for decoration, um, a little red cherry. Now, what I would like to try next time is maybe line in the rim of the glass with sugar or pop rocks or um, you know something sweet and fun just to give it a little extra flavor. But um, I hope you enjoy this drink and we're gonna move on to the rest of our course. Okay, so now that we have our delicious drink, I hope that everybody has um, had a chance to prepare theirs. We're gonna dive right into this lobster. So first off, we have our tails. Um, a lot of people don't think about cooking lobster at home, but anytime that I get the opportunity, I'm just so thrilled because it is one of my, my favorite meals, and it's so easy to do. Um, I've, made, I've been making this recipe for about four years now, and it turns out as an A-plus plate every time. So uh, I will be happy to share it with you. Um, you just, first of all, take a pair of kitchen scissors and we're going to cut straight down. So now we are going to try to keep your shell intact as much as possible because we're going to be using it to set the meat on top of the shell. Um, but we need to dig it all out. And I do apologize up front. This is probably going to prick your fingers a little bit. but totally worth it for the outcome. Um, this one's actually turning out quite nice. Usually they're not this easy, so um, if you're having a little bit of difficulty with it, it's not you. So we're gonna pick up the tail, and also, whenever you do get your tails, um, they're gonna be frozen. So I would suggest, if you know that you're going to be cooking your tails, um, put them in the uh, refrigerator earlier in the day, and then you can also just take them right out of the plastic and run cool to lukewarm water and just kind of caress them, if you will, uh, until all the ice falls off. So we've got it sitting up here, and first thing we're going to do, if you do have anything that you need to clean, you can just take a little knife and go straight down the middle. Uh, this one was uh, nice and didn't have anything for us to clean out. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take our oil and just put a few douses on the meat of the tail. And with your hands, just rub it in, pick it up, roll it around, make sure that you've got it completely covered because the olive oil 
uh, is an ingredient that um, actually is going to lock in a lot of the flavor to the meat. Because you know, uh, we are also going to make a garlic butter to dip our meat in. Um, so butter goes quite nice with the tail. Then we're just going to take a little bit of salt. You can use regular table salt. I actually prefer sea salt. I just think it has a little bit of a better flavor and I think it's prettier um, with the, the big salty crystals. So a couple of pinches, just make sure that you get it everywhere. And then we're gonna take some garlic powder. Same thing, make sure that you're getting all areas and a couple of pinches. Looking beautiful, smelling great. I wish you guys could smell this, it's so yummy. Um, our last ingredient is paprika. And paprika really doesn't have much of a flavor, but whenever you go to a restaurant and you order tail, that beautiful vibrant red color that is on the tail is actually from the paprika cooking on it. So now our tail is looking mighty fine and we are ready to take these to the oven. Um, there's going to be two parts to cooking the tail. I usually do two at a time for eight minutes in the oven, and then we're gonna take them out to the charcoal grill and finish them for an additional eight minutes. And I'll show you how that will look whenever we're at the grill, but we're going to do four minutes per side. So go ahead and let's move to the oven. Okay, so now we're moving over to the oven and we want to cook two tails for um, eight minutes on 350. And we're gonna go ahead and just slide them in here and I'm gonna move on to mixing up our shrimp cakes. Okay, so we have our lobster tails doing their first eight minutes in the oven. Let's move on and uh, to our um, shrimp cakes. Now I am using a crab cake recipe, but I'm swapping out the meat uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one is I always have shrimp on hand, and also it is quite a bit less expensive than uh, than crab meat. So I'm just I've already pre-boiled six ounces of shrimp and detailed them, and now I'm just going to um, cut them up into semi-small pieces. So now that we have our shrimp all diced up, we're just gonna throw it in our bowl. Smells so good. Not wait to try these out. This is actually the first time that I've tried these. I've had crab cakes uh, many times, but I love me some shrimp, so I'm hoping they'll turn out good. So the next we're going to lightly beat, or in this case whisk, one egg. So we get that all mixed up, and we're gonna go ahead and just pour it right over our shrimp meat. And next we're gonna take a cup of soft breadcrumbs. So whatever bread you have in your cabinet, just um, crumble it up into pieces about this big. Uh, one cup, and we're just going to toss that in our bowl. And next we have one fourth um, mayonnaise. Now you can actually use light mayonnaise if you want the recipe uh, lighter, but I had Hellman's uh, mayonnaise in my uh, in my fridge. I just because I use it in all my cakes, so that's the route we went. So these are not going to be as light, um, but the recipe generally, if you do use light mayonnaise, um, it's about 130 calories per serving. So not bad for something that tastes very delicious. Um, then we're going to put in a tablespoon of salt. Again, I like to use my sea salt, but you can use your regular table salt if you prefer. Um, and then we're going to do a teaspoon of pepper. Just blend that right in. And then we have a, uh, two tablespoons of minced parsley. So just sprinkle that all in. And last but not least, we are going to take a tablespoon of onion. Now I just diced up some white Vidalia onions 
And the recipe actually calls for green onions, but it's to your preference. You can uh, make it your own if you want. So now we're just going to mix these up in the bowl and I wanna make sure that you guys can see. So just put the bowl up here front and center. And that is looking so good. Cannot wait to try these. Now what we're gonna do after we get it all mixed up is uh, we're going to fry them in a large pan with a little bit of butter and oil, about a tablespoon of each. And we're just going to make um, some little patties. And um, I think that this little side dish will complement our lobster tail um, great. So after we have this all mixed up, we're just going to, I'm gonna use my, my tablespoon here to kind of scoop it out. Get a good little handful, like so, and just pat it into a little cake, like this. And now we'll move over to the stove top, get our lobster tail out, and fry these babies up. So let's just get that all melted down there. And we're gonna go ahead and slide a couple of our pat crab cake patties in. And the crab cake should cook for three to four minutes. So in about two minutes, we're gonna wanna turn them. There we go, just trying to get it to stay together there. Do a little swoosh, make sure your oil is all over the pan. And in this one, we are going to saute some spinach. Now, typically I like to use spinach leaves, but this time um, I'm trying something a little different. So I actually have the spinach um, out of the can and my grease is good and hot. So I'm just going to put my spinach in here. And definitely with spinach, you wanna cook it on low. Do not wanna overcook it or it will be a hot scorched mess. Um, so let's go ahead and just get all of the spinach out. And I have um, diced up a few garlic cloves. So we're gonna sprinkle that in amongst all the spinach here. And last but not least, we are going to add a little bit of salt. And we'll just let that cook for a minute or so. Turn our heat up just a little bit. Now it's probably time to go ahead and flip these little guys here. Oh, look at that beautiful brown, golden brown. Take my crab cakes off. I've got two that held up really, really nice and two I might have to do a little patchwork, but whenever you're sitting down to eat them, you're really not gonna tell. Um, I have some nice garlic mashed potatoes and I'm actually going to take these and make a little ball, just like our crab cakes, and easily set them down in the pan here. Since I have four crab cakes, I'm gonna go ahead and do four little potato patties, just like so. And these are a quick little fix here because they're already done and you don't want to lose the creaminess, but we're trying to just give it a little outside shell of a, of a crisp. And also whenever I put the plate together, you'll see why this is a, a nice little way to do it. And I think our spinach is ready to come off of the stove. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Maybe just a little bit more salt. And we can actually put this right back in the bowl that we were using. And that is done. Okay, so these are gonna take a little bit longer to cook up. But we want, them, we want to get um, that shape, that kind of firmness shape, because we're actually going to end up stacking our potatoes and our crab cake and then our lobster atop. 
and a nice little greenery on the side here. So as these are cooking, my grill is hot and we are going to finish up the lobsters outside. Okay, now we finally make it out to the grill. Our last eight minutes for these delicious smelling tails. So what we start out doing is just um, sit the tail upside down on the grill. And we're gonna close that up and give it four minutes. Okay, so now to flip them, make sure that you use your tongs because the grill is very, very hot. And you can just kind of with your fingers a little bit, flip that over. Now, as you can tell, we still didn't break away from the shell. So the meat is still connected to the shell. And if you do break your shell, it's not the end of the world. However, um, you know, try not to if, if you can. And then once we shut these here, we're gonna give it an, um, two more minutes and they're gonna be ready to eat up. Okay, so now our lobsters are good to take off here. And as you can tell, just grab by the meat and that tail flip around, set it right on top, and we're gonna take it in and dress up the rest of our beautiful plate. So here is our end result of our beautiful meal. We have the lobster, very easy, and as you can tell, the, the red and the paprika is just a, a golden touch. Um, and then we have our creamy mashed potato patties and a topped with uh, the shrimp cake, not crab cake. Um, and then we have our spinach to the side. I've also made up a little butter garlic um, dipping sauce for our lobster. And all I really use is just uh, garlic powder and butter, stick it in the microwave and you're good to go. So thank you for tuning in and um, next time we'll have another wonderful meal lined up for you and signature drink. And don't forget to check out our recipes on fancierfeast.com. And I'm going to dig in now. And we're going to tighten our lid back on and give it a... <laughs> give it a, a good little shake. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's strong. <laughs>